start recording this now. Um, so um, thank you very much for, for um, turning up to the, the, the talk today. Um, what am I going to be talking about? Well, the key thing for me is that um, recruitment in schools is a massive industry. People spend a lot of money on it. There are huge numbers of recruitment companies. Um, if you think about the TES and so on, they're sort of funded by school advertising. But often schools um, see recruitment as a very tactical and short term focused um, idea. And I think the, the opportunity to revolutionize that really um, save money, but also get great people um, and use them to sell your school. Um, I think it's a real opportunity for schools to have. So hopefully you can go away from this, this talk um, to senior management or to colleagues and say, you know, we can save a lot of money um, in the process, but also make our school look different um, and, and market it better, uh, which is which is where we're coming from. So please ask any questions as we go along. So very quickly about me, um, I think some of the people here will probably know me as a school marketer person, but I actually spent a lot of time um, in my marketing career before I became a teacher uh, working on recruitment uh, marketing. I uh, worked for Reed uh, Recruitment and then um, companies including uh, Vodafone on um, their sort of employer brand. And I've also worked in private and state schools as a head of department. So I've been involved in the recruitment process and, and seen some of the um, the good and the bad uh, about that. Um, I just a little plug there for my book, Recruiting Teachers, um, and there's a lot of data in there. I re referred to some of that during the, the, the talk, but there's a, there's a lot more in there. Um, and I'm also gonna, at the end of the talk, uh, point out a few other books that you can read if you wanna find out more about this. So uh, let's move on and um, just again to sort of summarise what this talk is really about. Um, first thing I suppose at the top there is, you know, when I was asked to do this talk, we were talking about who is it aimed at, and actually it's a really difficult question because sometimes um, schools share the, the recruitment, the employer branding um, between various people. It might be the headmaster, it might be the, um, uh, the head teacher, uh, HR, marketing, all sorts of people have, have a little bit of to do with recruitment. And actually it's difficult sometimes to, to realize that, you know, maybe everyone needs to work together and, and as I said, save money and, and recruit great people. So the three areas I'm gonna talk about um, in particular is the latest state of the recruitment market, um, what's happening out there, um, the idea of creating an employer brand um, internally, and then looking at the recruitment process itself as well. How do we make that, that better and easier? Um, so, hopefully that. so a little bit of update really on um, what's happening in teacher recruitment. And I know some people who signed up for this talk are not UK based, but um, I think a lot of countries have very similar um, issues that are, that are facing with them. And I think the first thing I'm going to point about is, is one of the reasons, particularly in the UK, why there is a shortage of teachers at the minute and why people sort of suffer problems recruiting is actually simply demographics. Uh, there aren't that many people of the right age uh, to train to be teachers compared to pupil numbers. So pupil numbers are going up, uh, the number of people in their 20s is going down, there was a bulge in the past, and that's causing a little bit of problem um, in primary schools to some extent, but certainly in secondary schools. And it's not an easy thing to fill, you can't just magic up uh, missing people. Um, and this is the result on the other side, uh, this is a graph that uh, someone described as a, a sad goldfish, as you can see they're sort of, it's, it's, it's not very happy anymore, sort of deflated a bit. Um, what's happening is the number of teachers, in particular in secondary schools, is dropping and the number of pupils is rising and is set to rise fairly significantly um, over the next few years. It's slightly out of date, this figure, um, but it's it's not really gone anywhere. The gap is still is still there and you can look at the NFDR and find out a bit more about this. Um, so, so one of the big issues we've got is, you know, for the next few years anyway, recruiting teachers is going to be difficult no matter what in the UK. Um, and here's a, just a quote from a head teacher that I talked to last year um, in London, secondary school, you know, um, finding it very difficult to, to recruit anybody. But particularly for independent schools, but also for state schools as well, um, you've got the problem that there is a global demand for teachers and particularly teachers who are trained um, in um, a jurisdiction, a place that, that where English is the first language. Um, and also there is a, a kudos attached to the British um, sort of uh, British teachers uh, and UK teachers are prized by international schools. Um, and you can see here, you know, there is, a, there is a global market for for the best teachers. There's a quote from Ben Keeling, and this was an article he wrote in the TES in the middle of the coronavirus um, crisis. He was saying, you know, even though I still want to get the best teachers. 
Um, and actually, it's great that he's saying that because I think that's something that, that lots of schools and lots of heads uh, should be saying, that we've got the best staff and we're doing it. Um, the picture on the left from ISC, uh, ISC Research says, you know, in the next um, eight years, um, there will be a huge number of teachers looking to work internationally. In fact, the big rise um, is perhaps in the next, it's just in the next couple of years, um, but up to you know, two, uh, 300,000 more teachers working internationally than there are now. Um, and those jobs are often very, very attractive, um, you know, to young people those in those areas, the chance to work um, and, and travel and also to, um, to, to save a lot of money as well, because a lot of these places are tax free. And then finally, I mean, we talk about um, the, the Brexit changes that are going to happen. Um, we know that whatever happens, um, there are going to be changes to immigration. Um, it's going to be much more difficult for EU staff to come in uh, to the UK. They're going to have to pay more. Um, and also, um, although immigration is changing, there is still this £30,000 limit on recruiting people internationally into the UK uh, for most subjects, except for maths, physics, chemistry, computer science and Mandarin. Uh, which is a bit lower. So outside of those core areas, it's going to be quite difficult to find teachers who are young um, and justify recruiting them um, into the UK. So that's that. That's setting a, a fairly uh, grim picture, um, I suppose, to start with. Um, now, some people, I have to put all this up here, some people sort of start to think, well, actually, maybe the, 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 the tragedy that is COVID might actually be helpful um, in that it, a lot more people might want to go into teaching. And certainly in, initially, um, it was seen that, that there were a lot more people um, wanting to become teachers. And, you know, I think the people have said that in 2008, which was the, the last recession we had in the UK, there was a major influx into teaching. Um, however, that said, there's still there are fewer people of that age group who could switch to teaching. Um, there have been, you know, a lot of the uh, fewer graduates, as we said, for the last couple of years anyway. Um, and the bigger problem, um, some of these headlines are showing that really, is that the pipeline of recruitment has been really affected. Teach First, who are the, one of the biggest um, you know, um, recruiters now of, of trainee teachers, cut their intake by 150 because um, people weren't able to, um, sorry, 120, because they weren't able to find placements for them. Um, equally, um, I was talking to John Housen of, of TeachVac, who I do some work with, and he said that a lot of people didn't move job at the end of last year as they might have done. People stayed on um, and perhaps there'll be more jobs at Christmas, perhaps at Easter and so on. And that is, is disruptive to the market because um, people, NQTs may have found other jobs or they may not be looking at that point or they may think I need to wait a year um, and apply again in September. Um, so I think there's going to be a shortage of teachers for a while. Um, you see that quote from John there. Um, and another thing that's happened, um, which I think is worth pointing out, is that a lot of heads particularly have been very stressed um, over the last few weeks and months. And um, this is a survey from TeachTap showing that actually head teachers are the most likely um, to leave the profession um, as a result of COVID. And there's some significantly high numbers there. And obviously, if head teachers leave, that causes all sorts of problems because they can't be easily replaced with um, inexperienced teachers. Uh, you need to move people up quickly um, and so on. And so I think there's going to be a lot of competition for head teachers, particularly um, the, the perennial issue of head teachers in faith based schools, um, uh, particularly Catholic schools, I'll be honest, um, over the next couple of years. But also you know, at senior levels, how do we get people and how do we move them up uh, as quickly as possible? So I think, you know, um, teaching is, is, is going to have a problem with re recruiting for, for quite some time. Um, so that's one side of the problem that the, the demand for the supply of teachers, sorry, may not be as, as good as you think. Um, another reason, really, another um, slide here talking about um, why teachers don't actually apply for jobs anyway. Um, teaching is, is quite a sticky profession, actually. People don't move as much as, as they might do in other careers. I used to work in, in marketing, PR, and people used to move all the time. Uh, teachers don't. Um, and that causes problems as well because um, people find good schools and stay there. Um, and other schools have huge, huge turnover. Um, so when you do research with teachers and ask them about applying for jobs, they come up with these objections. Um, the first one, I, I've already got a job really much, is that is that idea that teachers will see a lot of teaching jobs as the same. Um, they will um, see other uh, fear, you know, moving to, to other schools, better the devil. You know you hear quite a bit when you do uh, research with people. And also within teaching, you have this, this barrier that you have to tell your current employer um, if you're applying for a job, or certainly have to do that by the time you get an interview. 
Um, so that's a problem. And the process of teaching, finding a job as a teacher is, is, is far more time consuming than in, in many other careers, as I'll show you later on. Um, and some schools don't handle applications well. So you've got this problem as well that, you know, you might have a great job, um, but you might find it very difficult to persuade people to, to work for you. So um, how do we change this process? How do we how do we do this? To me, the first thing is to just sort of, you know, sit back like all marketing things do and say, you know, we're going to we're going to find something to to sell about ourselves. We're going to become a great place to work. Um, and a lot of schools are great places to work, um, as I'll, I'll talk about in a second. Um, but you've got to you've got to um, find that you've got to evidence it. And then you've got to make sure that people can um, can understand why. So the. The four areas um, I've listed here come from some research I actually did about 12 years ago now, looking back at that, when I was working um, with the likes of Vodafone and um, the law firm CMS. And um, the company I was working for did some research um, into these areas and found that there were, there were four big drivers that, that organisations should be working on if they wanted to, um, to, to make the case for someone uh, to work for, for you. Um, so the first one is um, is values. Now, values is about um, uh, the goal of the organisation. Um, people are more motivated and like to stay and join a company if they feel it's uh, it's doing good. Now, schools are fantastic places for doing good. You're doing great things all the time. The only downside is that you can forget that. Sometimes you get lost in the job and the teaching and people forget that actually they're making a real difference. And I think schools should be celebrating the great things they do and that doesn't just mean exam results because that that um sometimes you know that they can be good they can be bad um it's the other things it's helping children get through difficult times it's um getting uh, people you know um through through the issue of covid at the minute and all the fantastic work that schools are currently doing so you know please take time to celebrate that um and to make people feel really good about about what they're doing in, in teaching the second area is culture um, the perception that, that uh, teachers are treated with honesty, uh, fairness and trust. Um, and that comes down to uh, listening a lot in schools. Um, are you actually um, aware that, um, you know, that, that if, if, if people have concerns, whether it's health and safety at the minute or, um, or whether it's about um, progression and development, are you listening to that? Um, and do you support teachers uh, when they have problems uh, inside or outside the classroom? You know, when, um, again, perhaps dealing with difficult children um, and so on. The third one is organisational health, um, and that's possibly one that gets missed out by schools quite a bit. People want to work for successful employers that offer development opportunities. Um, sometimes some schools, you know, employ teachers and you're sort of a teacher. Um, that's fine. But nowadays, as we'll see in a few minutes, slides time, there are many more organisations working in education where, you know, that, that offer people great opportunities um, to move to different schools within a trust, uh, to move internationally uh, within a chain. Um, and you need to make sure that, that you're, you're offering that. Um, people, you know, are less likely to uh, to choose a career as a teacher now and, and sit there for, for 20 or 30, 40 years um, than they did maybe um, 50 years ago uh, and so on. Um, what are you offering? What are you offering for that? And also, are you celebrate? Are you sharing how well your school is doing? Um, if particularly if you're a private school and you're growing and you're um, you're being able to expand and um, as, as Rachel talked about last week, you know all the development opportunities that um, that teachers will benefit from as well. And finally, um, the fourth element of being a great place to work is having great people policies, and that's the practical things that will attract people. Um, pay and pensions, uh, sort of obvious issues for teachers. Um, although it's difficult to be different to other people um, as a school um, in those areas, unless you're you're really lucky and have uh, have a lot of um, money in those areas. Um, but there are other things that you can do that are significantly less costly. Um, I know schools, some schools offer sabbaticals. Um, we'll talk later on about um, schools that offer golden tickets. I'll come back to what a golden ticket is uh, later on. Um, others, you know, have a lot of staff who um, uh, support um, through a bike to work scheme or through uh, well-being programs and, and things like that. Um, so the important thing here is not, you know, that I'm going to pick on anything in particular, but that you found things that your staff and prospective staff want um, and that, that, that you're really helping them with. Um, so look, looking across these four areas, um, don't try to do everything. Uh, work out what you're good at, what you want to be known for and, and what's attractive. Um, do some research. OK, with current staff, um, ask people who are applying to you, you know, what would what would um, attract them uh, to work to work for you? 
Um, and also, you know, on the other side, um, you know, make sure you're picking up any negative issues um, in the school through employee surveys um, and exit interviews, which are, um, I think I've done some research and certainly in the books showing that, that, that not many schools are doing those things. So, oh, uh, no, it's not this. That, isn't it? So the next thing to do, um, once you've got um, identified what makes your school a great place to work, is to find the evidence um, that shows that. Um, and it's really, really important to, to do that because just saying we're great isn't going to persuade people um, to, to join you. So, you know, developing case studies of current teachers, um, developing facts about the amount of training you're offering, the development that, um, that, you, that teachers have. Um, and in today's world, not just written media, okay, uh, videos are standard um, from many employers. Um, and it's much more likely that the people will watch a video than, than read a large, large amount of text. So this graph here on the side, you, you probably think this is fantastic, okay? Um, lots of schools are doing lots of things. This is a survey I did um, in 2018 um, with about 50 schools. And, and, you know, great, we've got lots of, lots of nice bars here, uh, except the graph only scale only goes up to 12%. Um, so very, very few schools at that time and, and, you know, very few schools nowadays are actually bothering to try and sell themselves um, and differentiate themselves um, through these things. Um, you know, even things like, you know, encouraging staff to write articles in professional professional journals, um, like, you know, we've got the Charter College of Teaching Impact Journal um, just come out recently. You know, some schools are persuading staff to write in there. So your school, the school will be seen as, as being great and um there are schools like Huntington School in York, which is a research school uh, that, that sounds fascinating to go and work with because of the, because of the work they're doing. Um, so, you know, say try and get those those messages out there. Um, here's a, a good example of a trust um, I worked with um, recently, uh, the Living Life Partnership, which are in a primary trust in um, near Crewe. Um, they don't have a problem recruiting. What they want to do is they want to get great people. They want great teachers. And um, so they put a report together for um, schools looking to join their trust. And they said, you know, one of the key things about this is that the staff development you'll get. So we want you to come here. Um, and then we went around and found some nice stories. So at, at NQT, he was offered a job in, in Milan. Um, but the school said, fine, go to Milan for a year. Uh, if you want to come back, uh, we'll take you back. You know, little things like that, which just go, go around the organization. And then people think, yeah, wow, I'd love to work for you. I'd love to work for you there. Um, some other examples here of um, people who are competing for teachers. Um, and I said before, you know, chains are getting bigger. So ARC offer all sorts of opportunities. Um, you know, they've got central opportunities in their head office that, um, that they'll, they'll, they, they talk about um, teaching opportunities, opportunities to develop yourself as a curriculum specialist um, and to move between schools um, and take on other roles. Um, and they're, 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 they're quite good. They've got a lot of people who sign up and say, you know, I'd like to work. I'd like to work for you. Um, in the independent sector, uh, Cognita um, have international opportunities. Uh, it says there's 7,500 teachers in 77 schools. You know that's quite interesting. You can have a you know join, um, have a career, travel around the world, uh, do lots of interesting things, um, and receive lots of development as you're going on there. Now your your schools have to compete with these people um, in terms of their attractiveness to get the to get the best people who are doing that. Um, and again, you know, people think this is quite could be quite expensive. Um, but if you if you think about how much it costs to pay a gold subscription for the TES because your adverts aren't working, um, you know, it, it pales at you know spending a thousand pounds, two thousand pounds on a on a video and a great web and a great addition to your website is is neither here nor there um, compared to that. The other thing that's really, really, really important is um, for schools to, to sell your jobs. Again, you know. Um, when you put a job advert in the TES or um, Skills Week or something like that, you you must sell your job. It's 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 something that, uh, with all due respect to HR departments and, and and so on, it's not about sharing a job specification. You know, it's about saying we are different and we want to be different. Uh, so here's an example. I mean, uh, and and you, and you could look at the the TES and, and see thousands of these all the time. Um, apart from the fact that um, people will see only the first fifty words of your advert, um, each word. If you're just paying a one-off advert, each each word costs about twenty pounds. Um, so in there, how many words are lost uh, with that? Um, you know, um, it was fairly obvious that um, the ability to teach maths would be an important um, role for a maths teacher. Um, and 
you know, again, you know, there are words in there that put people off. I, I hate seeing the word outstanding. Outstanding to me as a as a as a as a teacher means a specific thing. It means that someone has rated you outstanding in a, in an observation. Um, and again, people might say, well, I'm not outstanding. I'm just a good teacher who wants to be better um and, and actually self-select out and you might find that you don't get any applications or you get applications for people um who have a high opinion of themselves um so here are some some questions to ask yourself when you when you have a job advert um is it a job i'd like to do um is it in any way getting across you know for example um current needs such as income location ethical values flexibility so so if those things are in there if you if a job is flexible or part-time um or um, for a particularly good school um, or a special school or something like that. That needs to be to be obvious straight from the start. Is it a place I'd like to work in? Um, where will it take my career? OK, so does it sound like somewhere that, that, that develops people? Um, and then finally, what evidence is it that this is true and that it's not just being made up by somebody who's desperate to fill a, to fill a space? Um, and I always, always would look for a advert for a school that's, that talked about you rather than we. OK, so rather than we want to put it, it's actually all about you. Um, so here's, a, here's an example um, of a different advert. Uh, we value and nurture our staff and for professional development at the centre of work. Would you like to join our team of excellent practitioners? Read their stories here. So something a lot more attractive um, and, and, and so on. Now, again, if you're in a school and you're trying to do this um it can be difficult to, to go for scratch um but you've got some fantastic experts um every school will have a head of english um or english specialists who you know who, who, who teach people to write persuasively so get them involved or as i said you, you're in the marketing department um and you're writing adverts all the time do that you know don't let um, you know, don't just take out the old advert and, and recycle it and, re and replace maths with English or, 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 or you know, and then put it in because that's a thousand pounds down the drain if it doesn't work. Um, so it's even worth going for external courses in copywriting. Um, there are some great people out there who will who will help you if you're working for a larger organisation. So um, we've got some great jobs. We've got a great advert. Uh, we've got a great place to work. Um, where do we put where do we put our adverts? How do we find people? Well, again, a lot of people default to you know, publications like the TES or to a recruitment agency or a headhunter. Um, and they are, A, you're fishing in a pool with everybody, every other school in the world. The person who's representing you has no particular desire to, 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 um, to, to find, a, to sell your particular job. Um, you know, the recruitment consultants get some money from placing somebody. So if they've got lots of people on their books um, that they might want to work with you. But if they've only got a few people on their books, you know, they'll, 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 pick, they'll pick the right job. Um, so, for one. so the key thing for me is is, is this idea of using high trust um, methods. Use people you know. Um, that slides from a, a conference of university um, ITT providers, training providers I went to, um, and it was given by the uh, Department of Education. It was saying, you know, actually, you know, one of the reasons they've moved towards these um, uh, school-based um, teacher training routes is to, is to embed training in the locality. So most of the population live pretty close to a, a training provider. Um, yeah, almost 90% of the country is within five miles of a school involved in initial teacher training. So you've got people locally um, who you can uh, who you can recruit. So you know, work with your local training providers. Um, offer placements, even in these difficult situations. Offer placements. Uh, keep in touch with former students and teachers. Um, sometimes schools have a very poor attitude to teachers who've left, um, and you know, pretend a negative one, but actually, you know, they've got great contacts, they can come back, you know, they often leave for, for perfectly positive reasons um, and so on. Um, be open about staff leaving um, and share jobs on your social media, um, including personal accounts. You know, if you all, you think about how many um, contacts your, your, your staff have on Facebook, just putting a link to your website. We're not talking about doing anything more than that. Um, here we go. Um, if you wanted to, Find some other places. I think so here's some tips. Um, again, um, all beginning with the letter T, um, all of which are pretty much free for, for jobs. Um, teach back. I mentioned John Housen earlier on. Um, yes, I do webinars with him occasionally um, as well. Um, teach back is a free um, service uh, for all schools. And uh, Teacher Vacancies is the um, government, UK, sorry, specifically English government service for um, state schools. Uh, so it's not available for private schools, but um, you, you can place jobs there for free. Uh, TGLO is an international um, uh, network of teachers, a sort of social media um, place for teachers. 
um, and they're offering free. I think the last time I looked, they were offering free um, uh, adverts. And uh, obviously, they will try and upsell you, but you can put your adverts on there for free. Um, Teacher Toolkit, um, that's a guy, uh, Ross um, uh, McGill, who um, runs a very big Twitter feed and, and so on. He said he'll, he'll share jobs for free. Um, and if you just put things on Twitter and put teaching jobs after them, you know, um, people will find them. So think of lots of different ways of getting your job wider and possible as, as you possibly can. So that's getting people. Um, so you've set up your uh, employer brand, you've shared it, you've got lots of examples. Um, the other bit, the final bit is, is the, the irritating bit is you've done a fantastic job, but then people, um, you know, look at these things and then, you know I, I don't know, I might apply, I might not apply. You've got to make the process as easy as possible. Um, and um, again, I've, I've had heads talk to me and say, you know, uh, we get lots of people who are interested at first and lots of people downloading application forms, but they don't turn up um, for interview or they just they ghost, I think is the word nowadays, isn't it? That, that people are ghosted. Um, and it's a pain. I think it's really, really important, and this, this, the data on this slide um, covers that. The four reasons why people won't turn up um, to recruitment. The first is that um, it doesn't; it's not easy. It doesn't fit their life. Um, so, you know, long application forms, uh, making everyone interview on the same day, not paying expenses. You know, all of these things will put people off. Um, if someone has, you know, particular caring responsibilities and cannot make a Friday, you know, offer flexible interviews and let them come on a Thursday. Um, so on um that's important second one is they've got a job somewhere else um you know schools sometimes have a very long uh, lead time um the jobs don't stretch it out too far because people will uh, will take jobs in other places a third possibility is that they've had a counter offer from their current school um you know we talked about having to um you know say that you're going for an interview at that point some schools may be negative some schools might be very positive um, so the best way of doing that, really, I think, is to give applicants a chance to talk to you or to see your school before they say anything. Do the informal stuff first, get them excited, uh, make them passionate about you so they then come along and take the next step. Um, and finally, um, another reason is your school may have a poor reputation as an employee. Employer, sorry. Um, you don't get back for people. You, you um, have really onerous interviews. Um, you don't treat people well when they visit. That gets around. So. If that's happening a lot, just just make sure your process is is really good um, and you, you, you do actually keep in touch with people. Um, again, the very final point, um, and I'll let you look at this slide later because we're almost out of time. But, um, you, you know, equally um, a way of um, helping with recruitment is to keep people that you've got. Um, lots of ideas on this slide here um, from sabbaticals I mentioned before. Uh, flexible working. The golden ticket thing, by the way, sorry, is giving everyone uh, the chance to take one day off at any point during the year. Um, so um, that might be for a child's nativity performance or something like that. But just something that, you know, with, with a bit of notice, a couple of days notice, um, it seems to go down really, really well in schools. You know, just take the odd day off uh, with that um, because of those things. Um, and so here's the, the overall bit that we would get at the end, um, which is the the new recruitment journey. So um, teachers um, in your school um, come in uh, really happily, um, they get the job, they're retained, and then that keeps on going, uh, that they spread the word that you're a great place to work, um, and so on. And, and I, I've heard and seen a number of heads over the past couple of years that are making um, the great staff a real part of their organisation and thriving as a result um, in, the, in the private sector. Um, in particular. So, you know, don't hide your private, your, your staff, make a big thing about them. Um, so here um, essentially are some further books to, to read and find out a bit more about this. Um, the uh, first one is um, NFER, um, who are just the fantastic people on data. Uh, Jack Worth on Twitter is really good to follow because um, he'll let you know what's happening. So a lot of the figures there about demographics come from him. Uh, Teacher Gap, Becky Allen, Sam Sims, um, that's a really good example of, of the issues that happen when we don't have enough teachers. And there's some really, um, well, depressing case studies actually in there of teachers leaving because they're not developed um, with that. Talent Architects, um, Mandy Coulter um, is um, an HR, coming from an HR background, but again, really, really good at all the things you can do to keep people. Um, in schools um, and then recruiting teachers from me. So um, half past, 
that's a really, really quick run through, but as I said, we've recorded this, so um, you can have a look at it and go back over things um, over time. So thank you very much uh, for this. And um, yeah, are there any, any questions that people are asking? I will, uh, Rachel can ask, ask the questions, I think. Yeah, certainly. We have a couple of questions. Um, thank you, Simon. That was really um, interesting there. And there are so many really simple, quick fixes that schools can do to um, make sure they attract and retain teachers. So great advice for all of us. Thank you. Um, we've got a question from Mark. So what if we promote our teachers and they leave us or worse still, other schools coach them? <laughs> Yeah, I think I think um, that's a really good question. Um, and the, the only thing is, I suppose I'd say is that I, I've not really ever seen this happen too much. I think if if it's not the schools promoting people, it's you know people are poached because they um, they have contacts and so on within these organisations. We talked about the sort of you know individual friends and so on. Um, and if you're developing people, then um, you know they're going to be happier. They're going to they're going to be more likely to stay. Um, the other thing, of course, is that, you know, if they're going for experience that you can't offer, like a promotion, then keep in touch because, um, you know, they, they might like your school and come back as a as a senior leader in the future um, or come back. You know, I've seen a, a number of people come back because they didn't like the other schools. So so come back and so, so hopefully that helps uh, helps answer that question. It does indeed. Thanks. Thanks, Simon. Um, we've got one more question here from Susie. What? What are the most interesting things you've seen schools do to retain staff? I think the, the funniest one, and, and this got a lot of publicity a couple of years ago, was, was duvet days. Uh, that happens a lot in you know, other industries where people can, I think, um, give no notice and just take a day off. I think it's a bit of a nightmare for, uh, for schools, but um, the, the, there was a school that said that, you know, that if, if you gave a bit of notice, you could take a day off. Um, day off at a particular time just to fit with your, your lifestyle. And, and the, the, the um, school did that claim, I think, to have, really significantly improve their their retention rate um I, as i said I, I think um things like sabbaticals are a really good idea when i was at school um um you know which was a fair time ago i, I remember schools did actually do that they let teachers go and do things like spend six months in australia um on exchanges and things um and i think those sort of those sort of ideas get people thinking thinking for the longer term they're not just thinking let's get through the next year they're thinking what will i do with my career in in five ten fifteen years time Brilliant. Thank you. That's all the questions we've got at the moment, Simon. Oh, thanks for that. Cool. Um, so just a, a reminder um, that um, there are two more talks coming up. Um, next Tuesday, not Wednesday, we've got Julie Keys on prep school challenges. And next Wednesday and the Wednesday after, uh, Adam Milbank is going to talk about content creation. Um, and the, there'll be links to the, um, if you haven't signed up already, uh, links to these uh, in, the, um, in, the, in the email that we send after this, after this event. So. There you go. Thank you very much.